Okay, welcome. No. Uh, today's a special day. I'm going to give you guys a heads up for Military Studies 300, or AS 300, as it's called. Uh, I'm going to give you an introductory to astronomy. Let me push it on there. This is the book that we'll actually be using uh, next year, and with the purpose of me doing this, so that you can actually uh, you can actually go and look and see the comet, which is coming in the next two weeks, called Comet Ison. Okay, so I'm going to go over the uh, introductory to astronomy, let you know some of the basic terms, some of the basic figures, some of the history, but then I'm also going to talk specifically about the comet that you can literally look out your window and see in the sky at sunrise, uh, which is pretty much a once-in-a-lifetime event. Uh, to go over the uh, history of astronomy, uh, one thing that you need to realize is that when I teach astronomy, it's not like <laughs> it's not like history, where it's in the past done and it's unchanged. Astronomy is like a pure science in that everything is evolving, and what you learn in your high school life is going to change by the time you're my age. And I'm 53, going to be 54. For instance, right over here on the wall. We have a picture of the moon and the solar system. Uh, when I grew up, Pluto <laughs> was a planet. Is Pluto a planet now? No. Well, why is Pluto not a planet? It's too small, sir. It's too small compared to what? Earth. It doesn't meet the three the requirements to be a planet. Ding, 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 ding. Technology's gotten better, and we've been able to just make other discoveries and realize there are other objects out there that are bigger than Pluto, that should be a planet, if Pluto's a planet. So, so Pluto has been knocked off as a planet. And again, if you look at just the picture up there of the moon, uh, look at all the details of the craters. Uh, did people look at that like that 50 years ago? No. We didn't have the technology. We we're landing on the moon in 1969, which is almost 50 years ago, come to think of it. But I'm telling you, when you think about your grandparents, they had no clue about the moon like we do. So everything that I will teach you next year in Military Studies 300, Science of Flight, I mean, excuse me, Space Astronomy, will change from when you guys grow up 35 years later. Uh, one of the interesting points that I like to make as far as your historical perspective, when you're actually looking up in the sky, when you're actually looking up in the sky and talking about uh, looking at the stars, I always say that you're looking in the stars, look at the sky, you're looking in the past. Hmm, what does that mean? Because you're not seeing it at that time, you're seeing it because... I'm takes, looking up and seeing it, I'm seeing you at that time. Oh, because it takes time to get there for you to be able to see it. Isn't the sun eight minutes away for the light from the sun? Ding, 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 air five, good job. That's exactly right. The speed of light <laughs> that you guys are looking at means when you look at the sun, you're looking at it eight to nine minutes old. It could be blown up and gone away right this second, but we don't know about that. What about the, what about the moon? We know. Sooner. Sooner. <laughs> and really, if you think about it on a micro scale, looking at us right now, I'm looking at you in the past. That's kind of freaky, isn't it? <laughs> but that's the truth. So my point is, when you look up and see all the visible universe that we see, we're seeing stuff way, way, way in the past. Way in the past. And when you do about that, all right, let's think about historical perspective. A long time ago, 200 BC, before Christ, okay? There's a smart guy named Plato, okay? Arist Aristotle, smart guys. And they're sitting there in Greece, and they're looking up, and they see the sun. And it rises in the east, and it sets in the west. And you're not, you don't feel yourself moving. And they go, oh, Mr. Plato, how does the stars move? What would you think? It revolves around us. It revolves around me, right? Because I'm, I'm smart, right? I'm a human. I'm a human being. I am Plato. I'm a guy we still talk about 2,000 years later. I'm a smart guy. And Aristotle, they came up with the earth-centered approach. 
Geocentered is the technical word. Yes, that's great. I will teach you all about this. But the big picture is that the smartest people in the entire world looked up at the sun rising there and sitting there and they go, we must be the center. We must never be moving. That's pretty cool. Okay? I mean, it makes sense, really. I mean, you think about it, just looking up in the sky. That was 200 BC is then when uh, this is all based on Ptolemy, Aristotle. How long did it take us to figure out that they were wrong? Uh, years. A couple hundred years? How long? Ben Smith. Remind me to get that signed up at the end. Okay. How long did it take us to figure this out? About 200. 200 years? So by the time Christ figured it came around? 2,000 years after. 2,000 years after. It was around the 17th century. Ding, 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 ding. Everybody ever heard of anybody called Copernicus? Yes, sir. 1500 A.D., so about 1700 years. A lot of smart people. You think any smart people in the world in 1700 years? <laughs> we go from 2000, we're about in 2000 now, at 1700 years. 3700 A.D. You think there can be any smart people in that time? Yes. Yeah. But imagine if we went that entire time, we still looking at the sun, and going, the earth is the center of everything. Ignorant. So my point is, remember I started off this whole thing about astronomy, and what you're learning right this second probably will change. When I grew up, I thought Pluto was a, moon, a planet. Okay. When Christ was born, religious, I'm not religious, I'm saying people thought he was a pretty smart guy. Everybody around him thought the earth is the center of the world. Okay. Though, by the way, God put Christ right here and he believes that Earth is the center of the universe. And though, by the way, for 1,500 years after that, they did think that until a guy named Copernicus came up. And he goes, no, you're wrong. The sun is the center of the Earth. Heliocentric. What is it called? Heliocentric. Heliocentric. I love it. Love it. So heliocentric is what Copernicus did. Uh, a church that was in charge of the world at the time, Roman Catholics, did they like that Copernicus did that? No. Well, the, one of the reasons he figured it out was he couldn't figure out the days of the year mathematically by making the earth the center. If he made the sun the center and then we're going around it in one year, he could have a more specific calendar, which was important for the Catholics and for the farmers and for people running, you know, the, running the countries at the time. So the Catholic Church was happy that they had a more accurate calendar at the time, but they were kind of mad that we weren't in charge. That was 1500. 1600, these are round numbers. A very smart guy named Galileo showed up. Anybody ever heard of him? Yes. yes sir. Galileo. Uh, he's one of my heroes. Uh, I really liked him. He proved that the sun was the center of the earth. Did I say that right? <laughs> The sun was the center of These are some of the slides that we have uh, next year. Um, Galileo, did he invent the telescope? Yes. No, he didn't invent the telescope, but what did he do with the he telescope? It. He made a better version. He used it. He used it. He was a, a smart guy that decided to use the telescope and actually used it for, for scientific research and helped prove that the sun was in actually center of the solar system. Um, he uh, used it to study the sky and basically in 1609 which is almost 400 years ago he looked up into the sky and did things like saw those things on the moon that had never been seen before he saw valleys, he saw ridges, he saw holes in the moon many more things that we can't see yes sir um, what did they use a telescope before if, it, if he was the first one to use it like, to look in the sky? What does everything that man invent have to do with? Looking at stuff. Looking at stuff. What do you want to look at? Uh, plants. Ah, thank you very much. Try again. You're getting killed. Okay. You're going to take over enemies. the world. Other organisms. Your enemies. Advantage. Most, most technological advances in the world to include GPSs, right? Was a GPS designed so you could Drive this around your car? Yes. No. What was it designed for? So you can find the other person. Nuclear holocaust. Yep. And we can navigate in, in a nuclear war. OK? 
Okay? What was the internet designed for? The military. the military. You could wipe out a whole bunch of communication over here, and even with the internet, it can go around different places and still find, communicate. So the telescope was designed for war, to be able to see far away and see how many bad guys there were there. And he started to look up in the sky, and he saw that there, he believed there was perfection in the heavens. And one day, and actually it was in, in 1609, almost uh, 400 years ago, I was teaching here when the exact date, he looked for the first time at Jupiter, which is a bright looking star thing in the sky, but it's actually a planet. And for the first time ever, he saw four planets. That's pretty incredible to be able to look and see four planets. And then he looked back two hours later and what happened to those planets after two hours? They were gone. They were moving, yeah, they were moving. Some of them were going behind the planet, some of them were in front of it. And so he saw something out in the sky that for the first time ever was rotating around a body. And he's sitting here on Earth and he's going, huh, 100 years ago Copernicus said that we might be going around the sun and now he's looking up at proof that something else was doing the same thing. Did the Catholic Church love him for this? Because <laughs> he pretty much proved that the earth must be moving around the sun and maybe the moon was running around the earth. And the earth, I want you to know the Catholic Church hated this. They did not like this a bit. And so a lot of times when people make radical, radical uh, discoveries, the common people, the people in charge, don't like it. What did the Catholic Church do to Galileo? They banished him. <laughs> they banished him, put him on probation. They locked him in his house for the rest of his life. They put him before uh, the church inquisition <laughs> and him renounce his claims. Then. That is kind of a bad day, isn't it? That is kind of a bad day. So yes, that's exactly what happened. And uh, that, is, that is not a good day in your life. So what I'm saying is everything that we learn in science here, in space astronomy, you've got to realize it is absolutely current for right now. But it certainly can change and will change with our life. Uh, let's talk about units. Do we have to know anything about uh, how big is how? If you say it takes eight minutes to go to the sun, how far away is that? Eight minutes. No. No? Good try. Try again. Ninety-five million miles away. 95 million miles an hour? About. About. Here's something that I really like. This is my astronomy magazine. I'm a geek. I look at this every, uh, every while. But what does that say? What does that say we need to know about to be able to study astronomy? Math. 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 <laughs> math. <laughs> okay. I kind of I believe in the fact that you need to know about math to, just, to uh, study astronomy. So in this, let's look at some units here. And we talked about this, uh, what, in a previous, previous day about scientific notation. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody knows scientific notation. When we deal with, uh, let's see, 10 squared, what does that equal? 100. All right. How about 10 cubed? What does that equal? 1,000. So everybody, of course, your high school kids, realize that uh, when you have the two and the three, that's just equal to the number of zeros. Okay? Here's a question. How far is the sun away from the earth? Scientific A very long way. A very long way. A bunch of zeros. A bunch of zeros. <laughs> the answer is the sun is about 93 million miles. I was close. 100,000, oh, my bad, million, okay, million miles away. So what is this in scientific notation? 9.3 9. 9. 9. 9. times 10 to the 7. There are seven zeros? No, but it's a 6 that's how Ding, 7. Okay, which means you're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? All right, there. So that's a real easy way of saying 93 million. 93 million is a big word, big, big, big number, right? Let's talk about some other numbers. What about the speed of sound? You know, we always hear about Mach and going the speed of sound. How, how fast is the speed of sound? Um, enough to break. 100 miles an hour. 700. 700 miles an hour. Instant. Instant. 
What is instant? We'll get there. I can hear you. Okay, speed of sound. How far is speed of sound? Perry. I do not know. Yes, sir. 900 or 1,000. It depends on your altitude because when you go up, air is less dense. Okay, so when you're talking about sea level, that's different than 20,000 or 40,000 feet. Let's use a round number, though, of 660 miles per hour. Wow. Okay? And I've been that. I mean, I, you, I go supersonic almost every time you fly fighters in a combat situation or, or practice. So that, it's just not a big deal. There, you know, when you're driving down the road, you go 60 miles an hour, going out of Phoenix, 75 versus 55, can you really tell a difference? The first time you do it, you drive and you're scared to death. <laughs> but when you do it 50 times, you go, yeah, I'm going fast. 50, 75 and 55, I'm going faster is a huge thing. Not a big deal. But let's say our 660 miles an hour. How many miles per minute is this? Mm -hmm. How do you do it? That would be mm. 66. Miles per minute. Divide by 60. 60 oh, minutes per hour, right? So what's your answer? How many miles per minute, guys? 11. Ding, 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 11. Great job. So that's 11 miles per minute. Okay, we're good there. But then how about if I want to say in one second, how fast do you go? Okay, let's do this just like you're doing your problems. Okay, 11 miles per minute. Miles per minute. How do, you get rid of, how do you get the minutes and seconds? Multiply by 60. Okay. One minute, you have 60 seconds. All right. So what's our answer? How many, how many miles in a second? How many seconds does it take you a mile? 60. Or About six. Right? About six. So, so one one mile for every for every six seconds. Okay, pretty quick. That's pretty fast. Think about it. You're going. You go one mile. That's the speed of sound. Here's my question: How fast is the speed of light? If that's instantaneous. How fast is the speed of light? Ten times that. What do you think? Ten times that. Flip a light switch and it's yeah, that's what I think. How fast? It, is, is light immeasurable? Is, is there anything that goes so fast that you can't see it? Yes, sir. Can you, can you just do 93 million divided by 8? 93 million. Well, that's how you get there. The actual answer is, and then and again, I'm doing miles, guys, but when you teach the course, of course, you do kilometers because that's what the world does except for America. <laughs> yeah, these are special. Okay, 186,282 miles per second. So we think, we think that the speed of sound is fast. Because we are, we are human. We know everything, right? And we can go so fast that we can go as fast as the speed of sound. Speed of light. In one second. How fast does it take to go around the, the Earth? At the equator, how big is the Earth? 80 days. 25,000 miles around the equator. So when we say, one second. How many times does light go around the Earth? One. At least that. At least three Seven. four times. At least four times. Divided by 25,000. 186 divided by 25,000. Seven. Seven, 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 seven. Yeah, seven plus. So just think about it. One second, light goes around the Earth seven plus times. Wow. That's fast. That's one second, guys. We've only just begun to try and teach you about units and light. So then, that's what you said, 93 million, 98 million divided by this, comes out to be about eight to nine minutes. It depends, the sun is never at the exact same spot, right? That we're yeah. going around, we're going in elliptical fashion. So then when we start measuring things out in the space, when I start measuring what's out there, we start talking about light years. Oh. So we go from a second to a year. That's a lot. That's a lot. Okay, yes, sir. I've heard that the 
that all the light is created inside the sun and it takes like a hundred years just to get to the surface so it can come to Earth. I have never heard that in my life. We're talking about light years. That's not what we're talking about, though. That, that's very interesting. So if we're going to go use this number, guys, and go to a light year, give me a number. Give me a number. Tell me what you think. How do you get how do you get how do you get miles per second to a year? Well, you go sixty seconds is in a minute, and then you go sixty minutes in a hour. And then you go 24 hours in a day times 365 days in a year, right? And all your all your units cancel out. I think I broke my iPod. You just broke your iPod. Okay. Couldn't we just times 365 by 1,000? 186,282. Oh, no. Nope. That's no. Times, times it. Two per second. <laughs> well, how many seconds? 100,000, millions. Billions. Yeah. Billions. Yeah. Mine says 1,892,160,000. Liar. It lies. <laughs> Done. Trillion. Oh, Trillion. What about a leap here? No, we're not going to take that into consideration. Okay, so we're back to units. Here is your answer. In one year, one, one light year, hundred million millions, billions, trillions. So, what is this number in scientific notation, guys? Uh, 5.8 times 10 to the what? 13. 13. No, 12. It's 12. Well, 5, it's 800 million. 800 billion. It's 12. 12. Yeah, it's 13. I just here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12. Yeah, bam. Mm. 12. How's this 12? That's a big number. That's how much I'm making a year. In one year, that's how far we go. One light year. What is the closest star to us that we can see? The sun. sun. The sun. Yay! How far away is it? 93 Asian million Asian. miles, trillion miles. What about other than the sun? What's the next one? Alpha Centauri. How far is Alpha Centauri? Like 20 miles. 4.3 <laughs> light years away. Holy. That's, like that. That's the closest <laughs> one, guys. I want to touch it. <laughs> Here is uh, here is the fun we have. All right, I need every number two person from every group. Come here, please. <laughs> One, two, three. How many do you have? Three? I have four. Okay. I want everybody to look at these uh, these items out in the sky and tell me how far these are from us. A lot of. Four. I want the purple one. A lot of four. One. This one's exploding. Okay, everybody's got two minutes to read what I'm showing you. Mine has gas towers. Yeah, that was a show. Hey. Two minutes to read about something that's out in in the universe. Look on the back. Tell me how many light years, how far away this is. Cody. Yes, sir. Got a conference here, bud? Oh, okay. Wow. Okay, read what you're seeing. Read, read what is out there. Once you read it, trade it with the other part, your shoulder partner. Learn about something that's out in the universe. These are cool things. These are all Hubble shots, by the way. These, these pictures did not exist when I was a kid. I would claim that one. These are all Hubble Space Telescope shots. They did not exist when I was a child. So imagine what you guys are going to see in 35 years. What if countries started claiming galaxies? I just said, you got to be there. 
I gotta be there. Okay, you got another 15 seconds. All righty, how about the number threes in the group? Raise your hand. Somebody come up here and tell us about what you see there. Give me your attention, please. Uh, okay, this is uh, a tale of two galaxies. It's like two gal galaxies mashed together, and they're 140 million light years away from each other. I mean, away from uh, Earth, and they're 20 million light years away from each other, but they look like smashed together. Okay, so how, how far away from Earth? 140 million light years. Away. So, guys, <laughs> this is a light year, miles. And he said 140 million. 140 million light years. How do you do math? What's 140 million in? How do you, what do you do? What's what's 140 million in scientific notation? 1.4 times 10 to the 8. Good job. Snap. Now, how do you multiply this? Snap. What's your answer? You do 5.8 times 1.4. 5.8 times 1.4. How do you how do you multiply exponents? 10 to the 20. That is a big, big number. Look what's holding. Look what you're looking at in your hands. How far that away from you? It's unbelievable. That's part of the. Problems with astronomy. Uh, He's trying to figure. Let's have another uh, three. Uh, three back there. Somebody up there. Back group. Come on. Go up there. Can I go first? Yes. Go ahead. This is the Cat's Eye Nebula. It's located in the constellation Draco, and the, its distance from Earth is three thousand light years. 3,000 light years. What is 3,000 scientific notation? Uh, three times three. Three times ten to the third. So when you do ten, three times ten to the third, how do you do that multiplication? Five point eight times three. That would be four three to two. Three times three times five to eight, right? Three times five point eight times ten to the what? So what's 15. 15. 15. There you go. Big number. Big zeros. Pitt Smith, come forward and let me have here's something for you. This is a warm galaxy. It didn't say how far away it is from Earth. But it's 2,000 light years thick, 100,000 light years wide, and 13,000 light years in diameter. A warped galaxy? Yeah. Guys, what galaxy do we live in? Milky Way. Milky Way. Milky Way galaxy. So this is another one of our peers out there. Okay? Thank you very much. Everybody give a round of applause. Yay! <laughs> All righty. One of the things we need to talk about when we talk about astronomy is uh, our sun. Is it really, really spectacular and different? No. No. What is it? It's just a big one. Is it one of the biggest ones in the whole universe? No. Is it one of the smallest ones? I think if you go online and look, the theory is it's about average. Okay. So this is our sun. We're average. And our Milky Way galaxy is, as a matter of fact, where's the one? The spiral? Yeah, there you go. Spiral galaxy. That's what we are, is a spiral galaxy. Gee, are there any other spiral galaxies out there? Yes. Yeah. So we look at the Milky Way galaxy, and it's about average. How many suns are in our Milky Way galaxy? Too many. Too many. Very 
one. Just read two. Okay, guys. In the Milky Way galaxy, 100,000 billion billion, ooh, I made a mistake, trillion. There are 200 trillion suns in our galaxy. I lied. I lied. 200 million. I got to to myself. 200 million suns in our galaxy. Colonel, that's still too much. Okay. How many <laughs> galaxies do we have in the universe? <laughs> too many. <laughs> too many. Every dot, every dot that you see, is that a sun? No, those dots are galaxies, guys. Yes, sir. What counted all those? What counted all those? I'll tell you exactly what. One of you guys have the deep. I'm going to do it. The, the Hubble telescope has taken, that, that's it. Everybody look back here at the back. This is called the, the Hubble telescope. You'll learn all about this. I'll teach you about it. But basically, this is called the deep, ultra deep field. And they took the Hubble telescope and focused it at this one spot. What, 11 days? Ridiculous. 11 days? And where they thought was one dot was stuff you can't imagine. And so who counted? You took one dot and you counted stuff you can't imagine and multiplied. It. And they came out with, guess what? What is, what is 200 million in, in scientific notation? Two, Two times 10 to the six. Six. And you put billion. That's billion, right? That's billion. This is 100 million. Yeah. 100 million. 200 billion. 200 billion. How, 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 what is this in scientific notation? 2 times 10 to the? 12. 12. No, no, 3, nine, 6, nine, 9, 11. 11. <laughs> okay? And guess what? Guess how many galaxies we have in the world? Way too many. In the universe. The, <laughs> the same amount. Wait, so there's, there's, there's a definite possibility that somewhere in one of those galaxies there's a planet. We'll get there. Take my class. The answer is, guys, numbers wise, this is the amount of suns in our galaxies. This is the amount of estimated galaxies in the universe. So what is the number? 4 times 10 to the 22 suns that we cannot even see. How many planets around our sun? 8. 9. 8? 8 times 4 is now... 32. 32. I want you guys to realize how big we are and what's out there. Anybody here believe in aliens? Oh, right here. What's your definition of an alien? Green Independence Day. Something outside hey. of planet Earth. That's Humans. Okay. Help, help me count this, guys. Start over here. Start over here. Help me count. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 32. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. I think of aliens. Do we even have aliens? Okay, guys. These are how many estimated planets. We're one of them. In the universe. And I'm telling you right now, if you ask me the question, I am a very religious person. I believe in God. I, I'm a Christian my whole life, etc. Do I think that my God would put me here and nothing else? Yeah. After 2,000 years, the smartest people on earth couldn't even figure out that the earth wasn't the center of the universe. The earth is flat. So I'm just telling you, if you ask me a personal question, do I believe that there's other intelligent life out there? Yes. The answer is yes. What do you think about do you think we're most do you think that we're the most intelligent life in all those planets? No. No. Do you think maybe we're average? Maybe, I don't know. I hope not. I don't think we're like the <laughs> okay, okay, quiet, quiet, quiet. Yes. They're probably the most um, uh, probable way to know that intelligent life is out there is that none of it has tried to contact us. Because <laughs> really my, my response to you, this is now philosophy, philosophy versus astronomy. How many times have you tried to talk? to an ant that you walk on top of. A lot. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I said that all the time. I'm going to talk to my dog. Okay, I'm just saying, your human pride and ego that for 2,000 years we knew that we were, the Earth was the center of the universe, 
For 2,000 years, do you think we're, we got the most knowledge of physics that we do not even know it's about? Probably the Green Lantern. They probably think we're like, we didn't even know about gravity! Until we go, bang, there's gravity. <laughs> okay, what's going to happen in the next 2,000 years of knowledge? It's going to be amazing. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, let me uh, let me finish up with a couple things here. I sh want to show you here about Comet Ison. Smith, maybe we're not worth contacting yet. Quiet. Okay, question is, what is a comet? It's a ball. Nope, that's wrong. My bad. <laughs> Comet is a reindeer. That's a real good one. <laughs> I kind of like that, actually. Quite topical with it coming up. Okay. Comet. A comet is... So what is it physically? It's a ball of gas. Ice and rocks. Ice and dust. Ice and dust. Now here is the trick that you guys need to know between the next two weeks. I mean two weeks. Comets are pretty rare. I've seen two in my life, and I'm 54 years old. This may be the first you guys have seen. But the bottom line is a comet is dust and ice that cruises around the solar system. Okay? And oh, by the way, if it's dust and ice and it gets near the sun, which is real hot, what's going to happen? Burn up. Or it's going to turn into a hardened ball. Brighten up. So here is the exact situation that with the uh, Comet Ison on November 28th, which I think is over Thanksgiving, right? It's actually, ne it is Thanksgiving Day, actually. <gasps> that is the closest that the Ison, the Comet Ison is coming to the sun. Oh. And at that point, either it will go bye-bye, <laughs> burned up, or it may explode into the brightest comet you've ever seen, ever, we have ever seen. Um, so it's a pretty exciting time for the next couple of weeks. Right now, the, the tail of the comet, this is an example of a comet that I actually saw uh, when I was working in the Pentagon. But see, the, where, the, the actual debris from a comet always points away from the sun. Okay, always points away from the sun. That's their tail. Uh, this is a very famous comet called Halley's Comet. <coughs> I actually saw this. Uh, I actually saw this on in uh, 1986. I was down in Florida Keys, and that is pretty much what it looked like. It was not. It was as big though as your. Everybody, hold up your small pinky. That's how big the Halley's Comet was. So it was bigger than a star, bigger than a planet, but not as big as the moon. I S O N. Okay, I S O N. Like isotope. Yes. Here's a question. Where does comets come from? When I was a kid, we never knew this. And guess what? Your generation knows there's something called an Oort cloud. Monster. It is a ways out there. Billions, billions of comets that we do not even know about that come through this. And this is outside. Do you see down here in the very center? This very center is our solar system and this Oort cloud encompasses our whole solar system and it goes out a few hundred thousand hundred thousand light years we are right here in this very very little you see where my pointer is here <laughs> what i mean we are right here and this dot is right here this is talk about units, how huge these things are. So guess what? When I was a kid, we didn't have the technology. We ever knew where comets came from. What did the people back in 1600s when they saw a comet? What did they think it was? Aliens. Aliens. Like aliens. Not aliens, but End of the God. End of the world. You better believe it. And there's actually a very famous uh, picture of Halley's comet, which comes back every 75 to 76 years. It's in an orbit. They truly thought it was the end of the world, but because it's so unusual. Guys, think about a time before electricity. There was no night pollution. Every night you had gorgeous scars and you taught your kids about these constellations. You taught them all of a sudden a, a comet shows up. That must be the end of the world. It must be God telling you something. 
But now we know it's all physics, okay? All right, so here uh, is everything we need to know about common ISON, okay? And this is what you guys can go search or look at yourself. Um, November 21st, they're posting every day what's going on here uh, on it. But literally, you can look out your window at sunrise. I went out at 5.50 yesterday morning, and I actually saw uh, the area. Right now, if you look at it with your bare eyes, it looks like a star. If you have binoculars or even a camera, you can actually see the, the tail at this point. Isn't there like a little like where they keep track of it? Hey, what now? Oh, yeah, with Google Maps, and they keep track of it. Oh, Google Maps with Google? I haven't thought about that. I have, a, I have an app on here that is the stars, yeah, and I just hold around like that, yeah. And where exactly it is is the east, okay? So like towards Mangus Mountain. I mean, I live over here in Eagle Ridge, and I just go on top of the hill. But this, this is exactly it, guys. You can see that at sunrise, you have uh, Spica, which is a pretty significant star, and Mercury, which is a, a planet. It's up there to be seen, and it is right in between. Look, nearest, is, nearest approach to the sun is November 20. And what, here, here's a question. You see the tail? Why is the tail like that? Because the, sun, the, sun, the sun's down here. It's getting ready to rise. Okay, It's always pointing away from the sun, but actually Comet Ison is going towards the sun, and again, it'll be awesome, or it'll be burned up and gone. You'll never see it again. I hope it's awesome. I hope it's awesome. There have been rumors that it might be even big enough to see in, uh, in the daytime. Look, look, and these are other people in different parts of the world taking these pictures of it right now. Can you see it like right after you go outside? It's not view visible in the daytime. It's not bright enough. But these are at sunrise. Look at it, sunrise. And you can actually see dots. These are this is a, obviously this is a visible picture. This is you out there looking without binoculars. You get binoculars, you can see the tail. It's very exciting. Of course, the day I went, I was up at <laughs> I was up early this morning, uh, but it was it was cloudy, which is real rare here. But you guys will have beautiful days here in the morning. So you go to the morning and you look up towards. It's, it, this is actually the best picture. Mercury is a bright star, but it's actually a planet in the sunrise right towards Mingus Mountain and then right above it will be another star and you'll see something just like this and that is Comet Ison okay very exciting and again I've only had two of these in my lifetime I saw this one I saw Hill Bop uh, <laughs> which is the name of it who names the comets people the, people who see them. the, the first yeah no it's the first actually the first people or place that, that finds it so Ison was named after, I believe it's a Russian Ison. research station. Ison. I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, it's pretty big. Yes, ma'am. All righty. Uh, so everybody, uh, I just wanted to give you an introductory to astronomy. I want to let you guys see some of the amazing pieces of space that are out there. And, of course, uh, get able to review some of your math and some of your historical perspective. Any questions, guys? Next year, for Military Studies 300, we actually go through the history, we go through a lot of the uh, structure of the universe, but then actually, because it was Air Force sponsored, we talk about all the space travel. We talk about the moon shots, the uh, moon landings, how do we actually explore space, I talk about my GPS background. I actually was in charge of the GPS program at the Pentagon for one year, $250 million, how exactly GPS works on this stuff. That's the type of stuff we actually cover in the space class. Yes, ma'am. Is the shooting star common? Is a shooting star common? That's a great question. Shooting, shooting star? What is a shooting star? A falling shooting star. star. How much time do we have? Um, we have four minutes. All right. This real, that's a great question. Here's a question. Does a shooting star common? Yes or no? No. no. Answer is incredibly common. Okay? It's as common as uh, the Earth in the universe, okay? <laughs> Meaning, a shooting star is a meteor that hits the atmosphere of the Earth and burns up. And we see it. How many things are up there that we never see? A lot. Too many. Did anybody go to uh, Mile High Middle School? Yes. Did anybody take a 
I can't remember. What's the, what's the uh, Mr. Andre, take a magnet and go out and find yeah. micrometeors? Tell them about that right now. Um, we went outside, we just had little magnets, and we went just on the ground out in the grass in the middle of the school, and we got these little things, they're tiny little things, and then and it was funny, I was, I was out and I got, and I got and had one of the schools, it was tiny. Yeah. I'm just saying, micrometeors, they burn up, and we don't see those. And so meteors are happening all the time. I, I think the number is 25,000 per day are hitting the world that we don't see or do see. And then they come down, they're burned up and come down as micro meteors. Cool. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of stuff out there in space. When I was a kid, we called it the big vacuum. When I grew up, Mr. Peter may remember, we were kids, space is empty. It's just a big vacuum. No, it's not. Because we have the technology and there's a lot of leftover debris floating around out there. All right. Any other questions? Good question. Good question. Anything else? Let me uh, stop this.